Hi, I'm Steve Moriarty. Uh, I've been a gem cutter for 30 years. And in this series of videos, we're going to attempt to either enhance your ability to cut if you're already a gem cutter, or to teach you how to cut your first gemstone and become a high quality gem cutter. So in front of me is everything that you will need to do your faceting. There's a few extra things that you could do without, but generally these are the things you're going to need to to uh, be a quality faceter, or if you want to be in the business, you'll need to have all this material to, to do your faceting. Uh, it all starts with the faceting machine. Um, many of the machines that I currently have are no longer manufactured, including this one, the Imperial Alpha Taurus. Uh, Facet is no longer made, which is a great machine. Um, it may be remade by another company in the near future. Uh, so, two machines that I've used that I would recommend are the Facetron and uh, Ultratech are, are two great machines. Ultratech has the advantage that they do have an attachment for the Ultratech that will, you can also do concave faceting. Um, so from there, uh, let's go into some of the uh, equipment and starting with dopping. So this is the equipment you'll need to dop your stone. I personally use epoxy. Some people use waxes, but I find epoxy is, uh, is better for me. Um, I use a millimeter gauge to help center the stone. And these are your dop sticks. So you need an assortment of different size dops uh, and V dops, cone dops, and flat dops. Okay, the other glue I use is super glue. And this is when you run into a problem with a stone breaking loose from the dop. Uh, super glue is a quick fix. You know, this is a transfer block. Uh, it's, it's required for both setting up the stone on the initial dop and when you transfer it uh, from the pavilion to the crown of the stone. So I use refractol to see inside the stones. Uh, this is a dichroscope used to identify stones and tell which direction to cut. Uh, toothpicks I use to mix uh, the epoxy and I use post-it notes uh, just because they're a convenient throwaway. I take notes of uh, the design I create on post-it notes. So this is the diamond powder I use and it's a 0.5 micron or 50,000 mesh. Next is uh, a form of magnification. Uh, my preferred is the Optivisor. Uh, they also have these as glasses if you don't want to mess up your hair, but the Optivisor is probably the easiest to use. I use number five on both of these. Uh, gives me the right distance and right magnification. Uh, these are used when you cut. Uh, then you'll need a loop to use for the polish because you have to see much closer when you polish. So you'll need a few tools to adjust your machine depending on machine, Allen wrenches, and a channel lock to loosen up uh, the nut when it gets too tight. A tweezers always comes in handy. In the end, you're going to want to weigh your stone, so you'll need some kind of scale and preferably uh, something that goes to a hundredth of a carat. Um, stone papers to wrap up your stone when you're finished, or stone boxes, or plastic baggies or things we use. Um, now for faceting designs, of course you can create your own designs, but these books are just great books and many, many people use them. Glenn and Martha Vargas have uh, a series of about four books that are available that will give you all sorts of faceting designs and tell you how to cut them. I prefer this method because it still has a little input for you and you can be creative. If you're not creative, uh, the knee point faceting will take you step by step from facet to facet how to cut. Um, and it is a very useful book also uh, teaching for teaching you how to cut. It, it's, it's probably the best for a starter, but both these books are, are important to have. So the cutting laps that I use, these are uh, metal plates uh, with, with diamond. And I have here three different uh, grits um, starting at about uh, 120. Uh, this is probably a 220. And this would be maybe a 600. 
and these, because they're thin, they do require that you have some kind of master lap. This is just an old lap uh, that I, I've used as a master lap. You can buy a master lap. It just needs to be a flat, true running lap that these go on top of. From here, uh, I, I try, when I can, to go directly to a 325 Raytec. Uh, this is a new bond lap. Um, the, the new bond has changed quite a bit. They have reformulated it and it's holding up very well for me now. I always go from 325 to polish, except when it's maybe a really hard stone. You can use this 600, which is another new bond lap. Uh, both these work very well and, and polish very smoothly. And for most stones, I can go from a 325 to the bat lap. Uh, which is a, a tin composite lap uh, that's very hard and cuts very flat. And with this, I, I use 50,000 diamond. So ideally, you go from a preform to 325 to uh, the 50,000 diamond is, is the shortest uh, way to cut a stone. Now, other than uh, the bat lap, the other thing I use are these cerium oxide spectra laps. Uh, they're good for quartz and opals, uh, whereas the bat lap is not very good for either. So you're going to need some chemicals. Uh, acetone uh, is used for removing glues from the dops. Uh, denatured alcohol is a general cleanup uh, material, and it's also used in the alcohol lamp, which you'll need to remove the epoxy from your stones. Um, this is used when you're transferring, but this is used when you're finished. A tack will dissolve epoxies, so you just uh, have a jar full of the acetone with something soft on the bottom so you don't chip the stones. And you put them in there and overnight the, the, uh, the dop, uh, your finished stone will be available to you. You need a pair of tweezers to get them out of there because the chemical is not the best to breathe or handle. Uh, WD-40 is required for the bat lap. Uh, the tissue is required to put the bat lap and clean off the bat lap. Uh, this is belt conditioner. Um, every 20, 30 stones you'll need to uh, put some conditioner on the belt of the machine uh, so it keeps running smoothly. Uh, this is what I clean my dops in using the acetone. Uh, alcohol's general cleanup for your gemstone when you're finished. And of course, you'll need a nice cotton cloth to clean the stone while you're polishing. And I think that's uh, pretty much it, other than this little tool, which we use uh, a non a surgical blade in it. Uh, it's a lightweight blade that I use to cut the epoxy from the gemstone when I'm transferring it. And you'll see more about this later. So, so the last items I have are, are these boxes, which you'll store your laps in, particularly the polishing laps, because you, you don't want to get them contaminated. Uh, this is a jar with cerium oxide, and we use cerium oxide on these spectra laps, uh, and I put it on uh, with the Q-tips, and of course you'll need some matches to light your flame. So this is pretty much everything you're going to need. Uh, over the next several videos, we're going to show you how to use this equipment, and uh, we hope you'll be well on your way to becoming a master gem cutter.